dirt roads to rock crawling, tuba chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to the Wheeling Wine and Whiskey Podcast, episode 255. I can't Ooh. drive 55. Do you remember that well, song? <laughs> Little that was back Hagar. in the 80s. Sammy driving, Hagar, yes. Sammy Hagar driving his Ferrari, going bananas on the freeway. That's that's I the original road rage right there. His his son, uh, Aaron Hagar, used to live here in South Lake. Um, I've been been there over to uh, what's it called, Rat Runner's Garage. Um, uh-huh. But yeah, I remember that that poster where he's in a red Ferrari, right? And yeah, fifty five, and the yeah the the police. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. Going back. A lot, of, a lot of anger with the popo. I bet there I bet over <laughs> half of our listening audience doesn't even remember that the speed limit used to be fifty five miles an hour in California. Oh uh, all nationwide. It was a nationwide speed limit. Can you imagine you drive fifty five now? It seems like we're going in reverse. I'm it just telling is you. so slow. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, it's crazy like driving times. a Chevy pickup truck all the time. Or driving a Dodge. Like, oh, oh, no, Dodge, you're not even moving. You're just sitting on the side of the road. Oh, waiting God, yeah. For a tow or truck. F- or a Ford. That's usually the ones on the side of the looking, road. Looking not in your side, side dead, big ass mirrors, seeing your transmission about 300 <laughs> feet behind you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I'm back, baby. I'm back. Uh, my truck's All right. We got good down. audio. We got good audio. Yeah, we, we have good audio. Good. We're, we're recording. We got good Starlink, uh, or, or we got the interwebs going right here, hardwired in. Yes, this sir. Good. We yeah. had a uh, Lorenzo after uh, last week's episode. Um, I, I put uh, a saddle on him, but it was like a working saddle and a couple <laughs> spools of cable, and I ran them all the way down to your house. I Perfect. told him I, whiskey's closed off, and he ran all the way down to your house and ran a, a cable all the way to your house. So. Got Wonderful. that all dialed in here this morning. So we got mm. all the all the gigabits now. All of all of them, all of them, isn't it? Mega gigabits, terabits. Mega, well, gigabits terabits. are better than megabits, and terabits it's are just better like than... it's all better than having a. It's like it's like having uh, no transfer cases. The speed's all there. It's all there. Yeah, you're not you're not going low, low, low. We're we're just bypass. We go straight transmission to a transfer case with a, right. <laughs> instead of a instead of a two to one transfer case. You know, we've got like a negative five to one going right now. Perfect, it just increases. I like it. Yeah, there we go. Nice. It's well, it's good to be back. Case. It's good to be back live. Well, not live, but it's good to be back with uh, great con- connectivity. Yeah, missed you. That was we very tried- frustrating. It was very. We tried hard last week. I, we got, I think, great content, but you were, you know, in and out. It was touch and go. Um, but I think the the episode turned out really well. I, um, I I had a gun to my head at one point because I was so fucking frustrated. But uh, we we survived. We survived it. Yeah. Whiskey helps. Whiskey helps. <laughs> Speaking of whiskey, yeah. what are you drinking over there? I have cracked open a bottle of Bullet Rye, the Frontier Whiskey. That's the green label stuff that you can find anywhere oh, and yeah. everywhere. And uh, I hadn't opened this bottle yet. I actually bought it before before King of the Hammers, and I, I actually had it at King of the Hammers. But uh, there was such a vast collection of whiskeys in your <laughs> yeah, uh, trailer. Yeah, it never there made it to my, never, my trailer. <laughs> I never had to break open anything. I just, you know, it was crazy. Uh you know, I mean, I had some old elk in my camper, and I and 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 this, and of course some regular Jack Daniels, which I was drinking with Jack and Cokes. But so I finally opened this Bullet Ride today, and man, that's a good one. It's really good. That's an it's, easy easy sipper. Yes, sir. I put it. I put it like it's just just above uh, Basil Hayden. It's an easy sipper. It's good. Um, it's affordable because you it's got very affordable. Is that a Costco bottle? That's a car. That's so a one point like seven five. It's a, yeah, it's a handle. Yep. Yeah, it's a so, handle. Even though it doesn't have a handle on it, even it doesn't have a handle on it. But uh, yeah, it's it's sweet and it's uh, very smooth. It's a little hot, but uh, it's it's a what is the it's a light, uh, what is the light heat? Of, it's only like forty something, I think. I think uh, the heat that you're you're not interpreting alcohol heat. You're you're interpreting a little. Um, 
non old elk smoothness heat is what you're right. It's, I it's just a little hint at the very it's tail. Like 40, it's 90 proof. It, oh, it is 90 proof. Yeah. So it's 45. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, which is good. But it's sweet and sweet and caramelly. It's very good. I like it. Mm. I like it a lot. Caramelly. With the underlying tones of leather bound books. <laughs> hmm. I don't, I don't and freshly cut grass. No. Ooh, so. No, that's not good. That's like Sauvignon Blanc. It's like, right. <laughs> <laughs> so but we do, you know, th- speaking of what are you drinking? I mean, you sound like um, you killed a bottle or just I did. That, I'm uh, I'm bottle load. killing right now. Mm-hmm. You hear that? Dead bottle. Dead she gone. It's it's gone. Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it, man. My whiskey collection has been hit hard. Um, people, I've had a lot of uh, visitors, uh, guests of the uh, Chateau de Green up here in Minden, and uh, boy, they just you know they saunter in to the whiskey office and uh-huh. with their empty glass, and they come out with like two, three fingers poor you know <laughs> help yourself it's cool um well, but i have a lot of bottles a, you don't keep a ladder I, I, in there for the high well high i stuff, just right? i just figured out i could lock the door i didn't even know i could lock the door here so the the whiskey room is going to be locked with a, a combination code and maybe a retina id thing or something uh, um, f- biometrics yeah biometrics that's it that's what i should do <laughs> Bi- biometrics um but you anyways hoof, you have a hoof reader on there or what oh no no we don't want no hoof reading he's he's been good lately i gotta admit lorenzo um he's uh he's he hasn't been going to the cvi much either although we were there on a s- friday night that was quite the uh quite the night at the blackjack table let me tell you maybe that's oh, a boy. story for later <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I don't um, know if you ever actually told us what you're drinking, right? No, now. that's what I'm saying. So I was leading up to I'm killing bottles. So this is a Knob Creek 12. Knob Ooh. Creek, a lot of people are like, you know, you get the regular, uh, you know, Knob Creek and the uh, was it Knob Creek Nine is a good one uh, mm-hmm. that I go to. But I, I, man, I like Knob Creek. It's just consistently good. This is small batch, 12 year, hundred proof, so 45 okay. um, percent alcohol. And, um, man, it's just great flavors. Easy, easy, like a Sunday morning, Chris, Easy like a <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> I don't know. This is the only but, easy days for me. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a good one. Um, but it's, it's a dead soldier now. I'm going to have to retire it. <sighs> Put it in, in the recycle bin. For send, it? Send it, it goes send in the recycle away. bin. Goes in the recycle bin. <laughs> Perfect. Mm. All right, on. So, what else have you been up to? It sounds like so you got. You should put up a no vacancy sign. Oh god, or a I, vacancy. I, I or no I, vacancy. No, no vacancy. No vacancy <laughs> sign. Neon signs going out front. Um, no, it's been fun. We've had uh, you know our our friends here. Uh, well, I shouldn't even say his name because he's not a supporter of the podcast. I tried guilting him into it, and I know he's like almost caught up, so he's going to hear this episode. But uh, my my former neighbor Jim uh, and his wife that that did the you know Monica that did the drawing for, of Justin Wick's car. That's right. Yeah, and we sold those. Uh, well, not sold them, but we uh, got one hundred and fifty dollar donation right from people that that wanted the minimum copy of these minimum things. yeah and uh that money that was generated was fifteen hundred dollars and we presented it to justin wicks right before koh and Correct. he graciously i mean uh, you know just unbelievable kid um i still call him a kid i will always call him a kid um he handed the money back and says no i want to donate this to suli bunn Mm. And I'm like, dude, that's super freaking cool. I mean, again, our community, we've talked about this. It just keeps going around and around, right, of how great it is. And so oh, yeah. that money has been um, donated back to the Suli Bun um, fundraiser that is actually happening next, or th- I should say this Saturday at Prairie City. That's right. And you're going to be there. I am. I will be be there there in spirit. I got a lot of people that are going to FaceTime me so I can be there virtually. But uh, yeah, so that'll be good. But you will be representing Wheeling Wine and Whiskey 
at uh, Prairie City next Saturday. What are the uh, what time does it start? Does it start around noon? I think. No, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., oh, so it's a four-hour event, to two. and the, the, okay. a protocol on that is you go to the main gate, pay your, your entry fee, and uh, I guess drive to the 4 by 4 park, and yes. uh, I, I'm, I'm not super familiar with the park, but I'm sure that it'll be easy to find, it's, um, but yeah, yeah I'm planning on getting there right at 10 o'clock or just before. I think uh, JL Latte Rodney's going to be with me. Um, okay. or we're going to, I'm not, we're not driving together cause I'm not going to shuttle myself up to Jackson and then you're not going to go up to Jackson and then back. No, That'd no. Be, <laughs> you know, if we had our jet still Lorenzo, that would have been great. Yeah. yeah those but I'm looking forward days. to it. I hear the fundraiser, the uh, raffle prizes have really been piling up and it's gonna there's be super raffle cool. and silent auction and there's a ton of stuff and, and I'm on the, um, the the list that that i mean just every day hey we got this we got that and it's oh my gosh there is going to be some killer prizes to be had by people um so i'm looking forward to it um ozzy you know bought uh, a picture of the justin wicks right. drawing that monica did and he's donating that to the auction um so that will be cool. up there um Wheeling Wine and Whiskey donated uh, Element Fire Extinguisher and uh, Velcro Tactical Mount uh, cool. to that. And we got, you know, I threw a bunch of stuff in the box, stickers, koozies, you know, all kinds of stuff, hats, um, airplanes, bottles of whiskey, all that stuff. So it's going to be huge. <laughs> right on no it's gonna be awesome i know that i don't i'm not on instagram right now i've taken it taking a break but uh, i I am on facebook occasionally and i see the sf baja san francisco bay area jeep association it's been uh been talking it up so i'm i'm expecting the turnout to be quite uh quite good so there's a lot of oh yeah there's a lot of local clubs in um you know california there that are making it a club run for their month Oh, good. Um, so it's it, awesome. And I, I'm seeing all kinds of, you know, stuff on the interwebs there and the gram um, of people going out. So it's going to be it's going to be a huge event. And rightfully so. It should be um, great people. Uh, Sue and Chai and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Bun Trail Welder. So, um, I mean, they she's one of those, you know, there's always a handful of people in your, your world that always have a smile on their face. And Sue is oh, yeah. one of those people that just, and night run. She loves night runs. <laughs> she come over I to know. her camp. Are we doing a Sierra night run trip. tonight? I'm like, and they're all, yeah. And like yeah, she brings like okay. 10 buggies with her, you know, her she whole does. Big entourage, you know, and it's I like, mean, Hey, night run. And then James <laughs> jumps out of his bed and freaking loads up. <laughs> you gotta so. love it though. I mean, I, I love people that are just super, happy all the time and you know they go through it well obviously she's going through a bunch of shit right now but i mean still uh with a smile on her face and and it is attitude is everything and she she is uh the epitome of that so um if you can make it out there no shit and uh that's what it takes to beat a lot of this uh you know cancer bullshit um Mm -hmm. so if you can be there next saturday sucks yeah cancer fucking suck a dick anyways so we we uh hope uh hopefully you will uh see chris out there and see a bunch of your uh friendly off-roading uh cohorts out there at prairie city next saturday uh, it so looks like the weather's gonna two, be really good so i'm, it I'm does excited look good and i I, I have a feeling it's gonna go way past 2 p.m so uh oh yeah that's just the organized stuff but yeah anyways it's 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 a good deal so um we're happy to be part of that and supporting um that and uh again thanks to uh the generosity of justin wicks for you know donating that his cash back to her you know so that's oh, that's yeah, super no. cool it is cool good uh good feelings um so you know we were talking about whiskey and uh led into the Suli deal but i i got to uh make a a cannonball run <laughs> literally to uh Oregon to deliver a car uh for a uh, friend of my uncle uh unfortunately her husband passed away and um she needed to transport this 1961 Porsche uh that was in pieces 
Uh, so my uncle and I put wheels on it, loaded up all the boxes of parts and, uh, headed to Oregon. Um, and that, that was, I literally got back minutes before I jumped on the last podcast. Um, it was a, <laughs> That's right. it was 36 hours from my driveway back to my driveway going, uh, to, uh, it was right near Corvallis, Oregon. Oh yeah, it was 11, 1140 miles round trip that I I put on the odometer, and uh, tw- just over twenty two hours of driving time um, wow. there and back. So it was, uh, and we hit all weather, um, hit rain, hit snow, <laughs> going up a pass in uh, Klamath Falls, uh-huh. um, Oregon there. <laughs> And luckily, um, I am thankful I've got a lot of experience driving in the mountains in snowy conditions. But, um, you know, when you're towing with a trailer, that's a, that's a different experience in the snow. Oh, yeah. No, that's a whole new element. You got you to gotta account for that. <laughs> so I had a semi truck pull out in front of me just below the grade going up into Klamath. And um, it was sprinkling a little bit, but I was like, oh, no big deal. Well, then it started snowing as we climbed the hill. And then it started coming down like big ass duck feathers. I mean, big freaking snowflakes. Uh-huh. And um, I kept my distance behind this this truck. But we were, you know, he was pushing down to... It the, snow, the road turned white and he was getting down to asphalt, right? So I'm like, okay. And all of a sudden we start up a steeper grade and he's slowing down. And I, I, I go, oh, oh boy, I know exactly what's going on right now. He's losing traction. He's and spinning so out. Yeah. He's spinning out. I've seen it on Highway 80 numerous times, right? And so I'm like, okay. So I start slowing down behind him, keeping like, you know, 15, 20 car lengths. I mean, I'm back there just waiting, but there is no passing lane and there's cars coming down the hill. Right. And none of them have chains on. So I'm like, okay, they're making it over the pass, but it is getting worse and it's getting close to chain control time. And, uh, I'm in four wheel drive and towing this trailer with a Porsche in it. I'm like, okay, I just got to get this thing to the destination. (laughs) And so, so I'm getting ready to dart out around this because there's no oncoming traffic. And I look uh-huh. at my driver's mirror and there's a semi truck hauling ass. I mean, just smoking the bandit type shit, right? Just fucking hauling the mail. Lo- big load of cores and out on his way. <laughs> He's, he is loaded. <laughs> it's a double and fully loaded with tarps on his load. And he's coming up and I'm like, okay. I tell my uncle, I'm like, okay, I'm diving in behind him because he's going to clear the path, literally. And so I pulled in right behind him, got around the semi just in time that was like down to two miles an hour in front of me, got in front of him, and I just followed the semi up and over the pass. And I had a, you know, we were we were all smart, good drivers doing about 25, 30 miles an hour, you know, mm-hmm. uh, not hitting the brakes, just letting her cruise down the hill. And, uh, that goes on for a few miles. And then all of a sudden I see, see the semi trucks, you know, hitting the brakes pretty hard. And I'm like, Oh, this isn't good. And I'm got my distance. And then all of a sudden I hear the semi truck horn. And I'm like, I look, we were making a little bend to the right. And there's like this Toyota Camry or some car sedan, um, slowing down. And we're approaching uh-huh. a tunnel. And I'm like, oh, this is not good. I got nowhere to go. I start slowing down. And then all of a sudden, the semi truck just darts out to the left right before the entrance of the tunnel. Now, this is a two lane tunnel. There ain't no passing lane in this tunnel. Darts so out it's to one, the left. One lane each direction. Yeah, going into oncoming traffic and freaking goes around this Toyota. Now I'm behind the Toyota that is fully stopped inside the tunnel. And I'm going, what the? The driver's out of the car. This guy, younger, I don't even know if they're a couple, whatever. Gal is waving her arms like, you know, slow down. And I'm like, why the fuck are you stopping in a tunnel? You pick the worst possible place. Your car was moving. They get out and they're looking up front. I guarantee what happened is as you're traveling on these snowy roads, right? Uh, especially the semi trucks accumulate snow and everything in the wheel well, right? And then it'll drop a big old block of 
snowy ice mass in the road. I guarantee mm-hmm. they hit one of those and they were pushing it with their front air dam. And that's why oh. they heard this noise and ran out in front of their car looking, thinking <laughs> that their engine fell out of their fucking car. Right. So I'm Perfect. like, this is stupid. So I, I actually had to stop and I'm looking at traffic behind me just piling up and I'm like, Oh, this is not good. One good thing though. Uh, I, I, I was looking the, the tunnel kind of veered to the right and it was wet on the wall. So you could see a reflection of headlights and just hoping that my fellow motorists, oncoming motorists were, had their headlights on like they should in a snowstorm. Um, uh-huh. I saw headlights. I saw a glare of headlights on the wall. So I waited and they passed and then there was no headlights on the wall. And I go, I got to go out around this guy because I don't want to get caught in a big old pile up. So sure enough, I dove around and got in front of them and I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, the only thing that would have just really put the icing on the cake is if it was a Toyota Prius, right? But it, it was like a Toyota Camry or something. It was it was some sedan. But anyways, exciting drive up there. Dumping rain in Oregon like it always does. Um, and, uh, and, you know, man buns everywhere. And those big old earrings that you put in your ear that... Uh, what gauges. are they? They're like gauges. gauges. Look at you. You're up on it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, the, you could just feel the, the liberalism up there. <laughs> It was like wow. this. It made my it. It just put me on edge. I was like, "This is not my place, man." It's a beautiful, beautiful scenery. Beautiful scenery mm-hmm. up there. Everything's green, like a freaking rainforest. But oh, I'm yeah. just like on on edge when I I'm just when we got into town and stuff. And but got the car delivered safely. Uh, uh, then um, left there and we went to dinner um with the the people that we brought the car to their um you know friends of the family of my uncle and uh went to this four spirits um distillery Ooh. and i'm like okay this is this is cool i want to i've heard about it i want to check this thing out so it was founded in uh 2011 um and they wanted to create you know, these craft spirits, you know, vodka, gin, um, bourbon, American whiskey. They even do like mm-hmm. a, a malt whiskey. That's, that's, uh, like a scotch. Um, okay. and they, they, this, the reason why it's called four spirits. So it's, it's total military based. Um, it was dedicated to four soldiers, um, that served in the Oregon, uh, national guard. Number two uh-huh. battalion, one sixty two inf- infantry uh, brigade. Um, but these four soldiers uh, lost their lives in two thousand four, two thousand five uh, in Iraq. And oh. um, so th- this gentleman here, I-, I think it's a couple of them, um, started this distillery and named it Four Spirits after those four four of their friends. Um, that that uh, were lost on the battlefield there in uh, Iraq. Um, and they were 22, 23, 24 years old. I mean, just stupid young, right? So um, we went there, awesome food, great, great hospitality service. And uh, man, they had an American whiskey, right? So it wasn't a bourbon. Um, okay. So it wasn't aged in new American Oak and, you know, qualified to be a bourbon. Right. So they had the, mm-hmm. the whiskey. Um, they did have a bourbon that was aged in a new American Oak. Um, and then they had like this single malt, the vodka, the gin. And, um, uh, I tried the vodka very good. Uh, you know, vodka, vodkas are interesting because, um, you know, you can get different different flavors, whether you distill it from grapes or grain or whatever you're doing, right? Or potatoes. Right. Potatoes, uh, yeah. Like Chopin. Uh, not a big fan. But anyways, I don't know what theirs, uh, their base was, but it was super smooth vodka and good flavor. And then their whiskeys were great. And and they were like $30, $35 a bottle. Oh, that's so I bought a few bottles. They got a dog tag hanging from the bottle, you oh. know, cool label. So uh, check out Four Spirit, Four Spirits Distillery in uh, Corvallis, Oregon. And um, I don't know if they ship or not. They probably do uh, if you are in a state that allows uh, you to get some of their whiskey. But um, 
you know, they they are a 501c3 now. They have a big foundation. They they give back to uh, fallen soldiers, families, and everything. And it's it's just a ask. really yeah, that's awesome. Really good, feel good, um, you know, organization. Um, so uh, definitely check them out. And uh, I, I was glad that we we got to go there and uh, and see their operation firsthand. Um, so, anyways, how, how so was Oregon's not all bad. The food was uh, incredible. Um, Good. You know, typical, you know, pub fare, but it was kicked up a notch. I mean, that's one thing Oregon does. They do have some some really good niche, um, you know, craft food uh, at these distilleries and these wineries and stuff up there. Uh, they, they enjoy their food, and it, it was freaking on point. Very good. Cool. Yeah, I have to check that out. I know that... Uh I'm going to be at a distillery in Petaluma next month uh, during uh, during wedding weekend, and I'm looking forward to that. It's uh, one of is right down the street from the hotel I'm staying in. Is a distillery called Barber Lee Spirits. Um, Barber Lee, Barber Barber B A R B E R. Like yeah, yeah, okay, like a barber. Uh, so I'm looking like forward to your hair barber. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this operation and tasting some of their spirits. Uh, so I'll report on that after I have some information about it <laughs> firsthand experience. Yeah, no, it's cool. These, these, it's interesting. You know, the distilleries are popping up. Oh yeah. Um, you know, it, 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 anywhere I go, I'm like, okay, is there any distilleries nearby that we need to check out or obviously wineries and stuff too, but yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. So good. With, with, uh, have this, that's the other stuff we can always talk about is obviously wine and whiskey and and uh there's as you said and i'm not sure there used to be a great distillery here in town called eckert uh they're, mm. they're obviously no longer in business which is a bummer and i'm not sure go ahead i'm glad you mentioned them because i couldn't remember the name um but he had a black walnut um liqueur that he produced yeah and that I made Manhattans out of, you know, a few years ago when I first stumbled upon it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God, it makes it a ridiculously good Manhattan. And um, during the move, I refound that bottle. I had, uh, I don't know, about three fingers left of this stuff. Now you just need a little bit to, to mix in for your Manhattans. But uh, mm-hmm. Easter, I hosted Easter Sunday last week. And... Uh, I, 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 my uncle, I go, Hey, you want a Manhattan? And I go, Hey, I'm going to bust out this, this black walnut liqueur. And Oh my God, so good. And I wish I could get more of it, but I'm, I'm going to savor the last few drops of this because, um, she gone ain't making yeah, that you, anymore. You, you can't get that anymore. No, no, <laughs> no, no, that's that. Which is a bummer. Uh, because they did have some great, they made absinthe at Eckerd mm-hmm. and, uh, obviously they had some, some great spirits. I think they had this or, or uh, I think it was an orange liqueur. Uh, oh yeah, that, that's right. It was quite tasty. And then they had their, their, their wines, you know, they were okay. They weren't great. They're, I mean, they were pretty good, but, but nothing to, nothing compared to their spirits. The no, spirits were definitely no. what they were all about. No, he, he had that dialed in, but uh, yeah, he was retired and started that place. Right. And then yeah. he like retired a second, third time. Well, I think what I, what ultimately happened is the you know with the house the, the property booms uh, they got their rent got jacked up a lot for the commercial space yeah. they were in and yeah. they just couldn't swing it anymore. So I I don't know if they really I, I think they left the state and they're in like Nevada or something or maybe in oh. California in a less expensive area to live in. But but I don't think they're uh, I don't think they're in, in business anymore even with the relocation. Got it. Which is kind of a, a, it's a big bummer. I do every once in a while want to uh, research to see if there's any new distilleries in town, but I don't think there are right now. Uh, we do have some some breweries popping up. But one just went out of business, but. Uh, oh, always crazy. The yeah, I mean, it, it seems like here in town, I mean, we've got a lot of flux happening. I mean, there's some wineries have been kind of re, re uh, figuring themselves out and. Uh, the, one of the comments, uh, Ira, you know, a fan of the show has mentioned that he lives here in town, uh, for a little bit longer anyway. Um, he, 
Uh, <laughs> we've noticed that a lot of the wineries haven't been releasing any new uh, new vintages. Um, it's been kind of weird. I'm kind of I think a lot of that had to do with the the the, the fires we had, the big wildfires the last you know three or four years. Yeah, that tainted the berries, tainted the fruit. So I think. Uh, mm-hmm. We've had a couple of good years with good crops. I think we'll start to see some new, some new, uh, new product coming out. So I'm, I'm mm. excited for that. I will say that I, I, and I think I mentioned it to you. Speaking of wine, uh, Bent Creek, you know, they have this Cabernet Sauvignon uh, that I really a bit, I'm a, am a big fan of. And I t- told you uh, last week or two weeks ago, I opened a 20. Uh, 16 cab from uh, Cabernet Sauvignon from Bent Creek, and it was it right. was drinking really well. Um, and then I, I finished that bottle, so I, I couldn't find another bottle of 2016, but I had a bottle of 2017, so a year year younger. And uh, I opened it to drink it, and it and I let it breathe. I didn't decant it, but I let it breathe for a bit. You know, it was at room temperature, sure. uh, and it was actually a year younger. It was drinking better than the 2016. So, um, Ooh, yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was like, it's, I got to find it, some it, more of that 2017. Well, that's it. It's a different years. And 17 was a great year for most vineyards in California. So there are those iconic years that just things and they're They're predicting that this, uh, this, you know, 2023 uh, vintage is going to be pretty damn outstanding. Uh, outstanding. So we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell. Yep. I'm looking forward to some new stuff. I know that I have, I think I have some pickups I need to make, but uh, obviously it seems like it's been kind of rehashing the, uh, it's like they're clearing out their inventory. And um, yeah, I think the, with the weather, the good weather, the, the nice rains we've had, the deep soaking rains the last two years, they're going to generate some really good fruit uh, as long as they don't get, you know, when things start to flower in the spring. And then if we get any of those late season rains, it jack yeah, up you don't the late rains. Yeah. No late rains. It jacks up the, uh, the bees doing their job and all that stuff. So well, and anyway, um, Phythopra and all kinds of good stuff. Um, uh, yeah. Did it, did you, uh, did you see, uh, Old Elk, I know you're in and out of IG, but um, mm. Gray Metz, the master distiller there, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's been on the podcast before. Um, he won Master Distiller of the Year. Oh, freaking awesome. At the World Whiskey Awards. So uh, 2024 Master Distiller, Master Blender of the Year um, at this year's world whiskey awards. So, uh, congratulations to Greg. Yeah. Wow. There we go. We got the crowd back. We're live audience here. <laughs> and whiskey. That's awesome. Awesome. Good That's job, Greg. So That's good. super cool. That's so good. So deserved. yeah, well deserved. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's great. And he's a car guy. So, uh, you know, he's one of <laughs> That's us. That's right. So that's cool. That's right. We, we got to get him back on the show. We do. We do got to catch up because there's some new stuff coming out um, that I am getting excited about. Cool. So, yeah. Um, okay. So m- mentioning weather and, and uh, so forth, we did uh, receive some, man, I do pop into uh, Facebook occasionally now and I'm seeing some people have their posts crossed from Instagram over to Facebook. So I'm not completely out of the loop, but I do know that we've had some, interesting weather the last couple of weeks and this especially this <laughs> this past weekend or late week we had uh man it got freaking cold it was like looking good we got some some seriously good work done on the golf course this is spring so we're doing we actually aerified greens last week and, and you know the weather held off long enough for us to punch a lot of holes and piss off all the customers um but uh, we were able to get the get the sand down and get it in the holes yeah. and then you know we were blessed with with a with a rainstorm two days later, which you couldn't have scripted this any oh, better so as far good. as golf course maintenance. But the it, the temperatures plummeted. I do know that on Saturday morning, I walked out of my house to to get into my truck to drive to work, and my truck was iced over. I, I opened the door; it was cracking. It was like holy shit. So well, you yeah, said it was on the uh, foothills, so, right? Yeah, there was snow the, around Livermore and on Mount yeah. Diablo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, you know, it was cold. I mean, 38 degrees when I drove into work. I think it was 37, 38 on Saturday, yesterday morning, Saturday morning. And you said it was like like 13 or something up there. 
yeah, this morning it was 13 degrees when I got up and I was like, whew, yeah, I'm going to stay in and uh, work uh, work around the house, inside the house here a little bit this morning. So, yeah, it, it has been chilly, willy, but I, I love it. Uh, it. It is, we're calling it second winter up here. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got some incredible skiing. I mean, the best best second best i don't know it's hard to dispute um day of skiing uh last friday just insane skied the wood kirkwood and holy heck just blower champagne colorado powder that you you get there um that's it's pretty rare, rare here for, we usually get the rare. sierra cement and this stuff was just it was cold smoke face shots all day freaking I, I just couldn't believe it. And, uh, and at Kirkwood is an incredible mountain to ski on a powder day like that, because it's got some killer steep shoots and, mm-hmm. um, just some open, open areas that you got to hike out to. You got to want it. You, you know, there's some good stuff right off the chairs too that, you know, but we're like, <laughs> we knew where to go and you head out, um, as you're looking up the mountain, it's to the right skiers left as you're coming down the mountain, far left, all the way over to the mm-hmm. boundary line mm-hmm. and you have to traverse the mountain. I mean, and, and you're, we were cutting, we were cutting trail to get over to it, which is a lot of freaking work. I was gassing hard on the third run and we made like seven <laughs> runs that day. I don't know how I made the seventh run. Um, but and then whiskey slides an easy one to get to that's right behind the 7,800 for people that are familiar with Kirkwood. Um, mm-hmm. and that, that is a lot of fun. You get about uh, 15, 20 turns in there, but you know, you go all the way over to Reuter bowl and stuff. And, uh, we call it Martin's, uh, Pine Martin's Canyon there, but, uh, man, you get like a hundred turns. You can link together in fresh pow, pow, <laughs> it was it was unbelievable the videos and stuff we got i was just sitting there going this is just stupid just stupid but and the week before i mean the saturday before we got uh goods in mott's canyon right here in killabrew on the nevada side of heavenly uh, i know you've skied there before and that is oh, yeah. some crazy steep terrain and lots of fun and uh you know we were we were hitting good powder that day and i thought oh my god this is great we're here we are the end of march getting some great powder not knowing a week later we were going to get some incredible epic you know best ski day ever powder (laughs) without going to colorado right without going to colorado is right here in our backyard so um yeah yeah it's uh winter's still going on up here i love it um, but, um, yeah, spring, spring has sprung, uh, you know, and, um, we'll see, you know, that's the crazy thing about the Sierras. Uh, you just, when you think it's spring, it's not. Oh no. I've been up there in May when there's been snowstorms, you know, mid May. Yeah. Yeah. I actually spent, a, a an Easter when Easter was one of the later years and we were there, I think it was the first week of May, last week of April, we had a pretty epic snowstorm. We were Easter egg hunting at my, well, my mom had the cabin at the time. Uh, in the snow. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I mean, the the kids are wandering around their heavy heavy snow outfits, picking up eggs in the snow. In the snow. Yep, yep. That's what happened up here. Even in the the Carson Valley, it was it snowed. You know, Sunday morning. So uh, yep, Easter morning. Yeah, yeah. It's good. So, uh, what else? We got a couple of voicemails here too. Yeah, we do. Any reviews? No, no reviews. People, come on. No let's uh, step it up, people. We we love reviews. We love to read them. We love to send out stickers. Uh, so yeah, we sent out a ton of stickers recently, too. Yeah, give us, if you're on iTunes, you need to be on iTunes. Well, actually, you can do reviews on iTunes, on Spotify. You can do them on Google Google Music now. Uh, yeah. Or, yes, yeah, Google, no, not YouTube Music. YouTube Music. YouTube. YouTube. Um, yeah, you, can, YouTube. you can write reviews. You can even write reviews on our website. You can go to the website, listen to the listen to the episode. And if you scroll down to the episode page at the bottom, there's an area you can write reviews or comments. Love to hear comments. Or you, you can also write comments about the show over at uh, 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 irate 4 by 4 Never forget about irate, irate4x4.com. Um that's a great place to, uh, you know, it's a great place to hang out and, and well, read up on great discussions. <laughs> oh, they, oh yeah. 
for sure. So anyway, what uh, what do you got there for voicemails? I don't know. I'm I'm worried. I recognize this one number that's in the the Bay Area, the Uh-oh. North Bay. Yeah, I think it's our buddy though. I think this is good. Let's see. Hey boys, it's uh, Rover Don here again. I haven't oh. called in a while. Felt like you were, you know, probably missing the dulcet tones of my voice as I drive through the rain here. Listening to episode 253, I'm about the 33 and a half minute mark. Jason, well played. I caught that reference. Yes. Which one? The moose should have told him. Oh. <laughs> Anyone who doesn't get it, ah, I, I question, you know, their, uh, their artistic taste. Anyway, that's about all I've got. Keep up the good work, boys. And uh, as always, just remember, Say when it. in doubt, Say Toyota it. sucks. That's yes! <laughs> Rover Don. Rover, Rover Don. Don. Love it. Yeah, love it. regular on the show. So uh, there was just a post here recently where uh, Jimmy Jet had uh, Clifford in Rover Don's garage. Oh, yeah? And, what uh, was that about? Uh, working on Clifford. I don't know. I haven't talked to Jimmy, but... Uh, yeah, that was it's great because you know he calls into their podcast all the time. What what's the mm-hmm. name of their podcast? Something Happy Trails or In Trails or something? In Trails. <laughs> oh no! Anyway, he calls in there and and reminds them that uh, Toyota sucks. So it's great. Always good hearing from you, River Don. And yeah. I'm glad you pick up on our our subtle, cheeky, funny comedy references well there's yeah movies uh, there's lots of lots of movie references occur on this show on, on the regular so that was family um, vacation the moose should have told you out front we reference uh, caddyshack all the time dumb and dumber super troopers uh we have our favorites blazing saddles blazing saddles we haven't done in a while i'll, I'll slip one of those in <laughs> podcast somewhere i'll make it happen all right, we got another one here. I don't recognize this number or area code or anything. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing out there. Hey there, guys. This is uh, Cody. Or as uh, people in the CB Rio know me, is the Albino Sand Squirrel calling. <laughs> love the show. I uh, love hearing you guys talk about stuff. I don't know why I'm using a fake accent. I just like to mess with people. Anyway, uh, I'm calling as I actually got some, uh, I'm actually looking for some advice on something. Uh-oh. So here's the situation. I got uh, a 98 Grand Cherokee uh, ZJ I'm looking to build up. Mm. But the thing is, it's kind of a piece of junk, pretty thrashed. I'm only going to be using it as a wheel, or just a wheel and rig, not really much of a daily driver, although I do plan on running around in like a second vehicle. I'm thinking about just kind of going away from Jeeps for a while in general and going into the uh, into the Urban Douche Coupe uh, world, more or less. It's a lot more money, but it's a lot less, well, a lot less breaking around, breaking down and having to jerry shit to make it work. Yeah, you know, part of a French. Um, These are smaller things to work on. It's just something, uh, just kind of something ping ponging around my head as I'm just driving. I'm a truck driver, by the way. I'm just driving on the roads. You hear a bunch of random shit bounce around. That's what it is in the background. <laughs> um, but anyway, love the show. Look forward to you guys uh, reacting to this bullshit that I'm leaving. And they, oh yeah, brother, Toyota sucks, and their brother fucking go rock rolling in center, but I'm just throwing shit out there. Uh, y'all have a good one. Bye. Yeehaw. I oh, like that it. That is freaking awesome. Wait, so what was the, what's his name? Cody? Wait. Yeah, Cody. Hey, guys, this is uh, Cody, or as uh, people in the CB Rio know me, is the Albino Sand Squirrel. The Albino Sand Squirrel. I love it. The Albino nice. Sand Squirrel. Doesn't that conjure up an image? I'm not quite sure what I want to do with that right now. (laughs) All right, Cody. Freaking awesome. (laughs) Love the voicemails. Keep them coming. That is is good. Thinking of getting a douche coupe, you know, Arturo Arturo Soria is selling his. I think he sold it. Oh, did it sell? I I, I almost said something. I was like, hmm. Prepped by a racer, driven by a racer. Might not be a bad rig, you know. Easy almost, in and out, door opens up. Yeah, I know. I uh, that would have been the, that would have been the death death uh, knell to my wedding, my marriage, right there. If I had bought a douche, nah, group. <laughs> no, just to call it a golf cart, call it what it is, just a golf cart. Right, we're just gonna cruise, you know. Right. Um, 
Well, I, I, I got to say, uh, since I stepped over to the dark side, um, it, it is the ideal rig for the desert right behind my house. It, it, it does well. It's comfortable. It's easy. With age comes the cage. You know, just, um, man, that suspension is unfreaking believable how it just soaks up the whoops and everything. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm not a go fast guy, but you can go fast if you want to. And uh, I, I have had it doing some mild rock crawling and stuff, and it, it does well. It flexes like a brick, but, uh, <laughs> you, you know, it's got a full skid plate underneath, so you just slide right over and send it, like you said there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he did add Toyota Suck in there. just want to reiterate that. That was awesome. Um, yeah. But I, I, you know, I, I was of the, um, after my friends have had them and everything, I thought, well, now is it, you know, living out here in Nevada, I got to get one. Um, but I wanted to get one that was all set up. So I, I lucked out, found a guy that, that did all the, the great mods. And, uh, so it was quote unquote turnkey ready. Um, but man, it, it's just like any of the new vehicles, you know, Bronco, Jeep, bolt on up the wazoo you can upgrade these things and it does nickel and dime you to death if you do oh, that but or, if well, you can find one already set up it's inflation it's dollar do. and five dollar it's not nickel and dime anymore yeah and the time i mean it, it's like you know i've built enough rigs over the years and it's cool when you take a rig and build it 100 percent in your garage in your shop whatever you got in your driveway in the dirt whatever you got going on and get to drive it and and you know conquer some of these crazy trails that we have up here um you know in the sierra nevadas rubicon and fordice and stuff i mean there's a yep. sense of pride there that hey i built this thing it it just did this crazy trail and nothing broke um but i mean joe blow with a simple craftsman you know mechanics you know 48 piece set can bolt a bunch of shit on to uh these side by sides now and and go do these trails and it it's it's pretty mind boggling, but it does work. What are you talking um, about? You can take them right off the showroom floor and go do this. Trails. Well, there, there's that too. And, uh, they're super capable, but I, I just put a gusset kit on the front of my rig a few weeks ago and I fought with that thing. I mean, I don't claim to be the best mechanic out there by far. Um, but I do have good mechanical skills. I've got a ton of different tools, you know, because there's always that, that right tool for the job. And if you got it, it makes it easier. But this, this gusset kit on the front end that strengthens up the whole, uh, you know, where your gearbox is up front. And, uh, oh, my God, what a pain in the freaking ass. And I had an extra pair of hands helping me out. Um, and I was just, it, it was a greasy, nasty mess. I, I don't ever want to do a gusset kit again. But, uh, yeah, it was the uh, CT Raceworks bomb proof kit. And it is nice. I mean, it it. It works. It definitely freaking strengthens up, double shears, everything. But, oh, man, they, they just don't give you much room to work in there. You got to have small hands. <laughs> I have three tools, a small, medium, and large hammers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The hammer came out. The hammer came out for that install. <laughs> We'll see. Just I am beat, beat uh, it into submission. <laughs> I am, I am in the midst of packing right now to go to back to Oregon to Coos Bay, Oregon. So we'll see how this uh, this goes. Um, it's going to be interesting. I got my my group of old four wheeling friends that just side by side now, um, and we'll. Uh, there's just it's going to be a bunch of golf carts out on the sand. So this, this should be interesting. You going to put the paddles on? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was the other great thing. It it came with paddle tires, and I'm like, hell yeah! And I'm not far from Sand Mountain, so I'm going to be heading out there, um, you know, this early summer. So yeah, it's well, just you, another form of outdoor entertainment. You when know, you're living your retired life to the fullest now, which is great. I love it. Uh, retarded, retarded life. You said it wrong, Chris. It's no, retired. Life. You, you, you don't no. work anymore. I work. Um, I work more than you know, but uh, I've I've gotten to a point where uh, it's work harder, you know, work smarter, not harder. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm cool. Be well, unemployed. Shit. I'm going to be calling you for top ramen and shit here soon. Uh, well, you you I'll, I'll send you a few bucks from the uh, the Wheeling Wine Whiskey funding. 
Oh, listeners, great. the Thank listeners you. will keep you fed with top ramen. How about that? Well, they they supported you know Lorenzo during his heyday, <laughs> Mexico and Spain and all those great places he went. Ecuador, Lorenzo freed Lorenzo Honduras, freed on the IG hang, hanging out with the Sandinistas. <laughs> If you have not, if you've got IG and you have not looked at Lorenzo dot freed, it's Lorenzo dot freed. That's right. Do yourself a favor. There's some great, it, it documented Lorenzo's journey when he was missing from the podcast. It's pretty good. Donkey napped. He got donkey napped. Ass napped. Donkey napped. Ass napped. That's right. <laughs> so. Uh, so anyway, also what's going on, we haven't talked about it yet, but NorCal Rock Racing just happened at uh, Prairie City this past Prairie weekend. Prairie City, yes. And unfortunately, we went on the interway. I think Jason may have a little bit of information about what went down, but I, as I've said, I'm not on Instagram, so I have, not, I have no, no new knowledge. Uh, and the website no does not have any uh, website does not have any official results, so... If you made it out to the NorCal Rock Racing at Prairie City this past weekend, uh, I'm sure you experienced some pretty kick-ass There's racing. a lot of people out there. It was, yeah? it was a big event. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the first, first mean, race of, of the season, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. First. I mean, uh, Keith and Melissa were out there in the Test 10. It was a mud fest. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, it was. Chucky Crossland was out there, you know, fucking Chucky. Oh, I bet. Um, yeah. Yeah, of course, Justin Hall was out there. He always races uh, the Prairie City um, NorCal events there. Megan Miller. Megan Miller was there. I mean, and she finished second in her class. Um, awesome. Let's see. We got a bunch of people that were, were there. Um, let's see if Justin posted. What did he? He got second place for the main. He did oh, get no second kidding. place for the main, too. Yep. That's freaking awesome. So that's so good, but muddy. Oh my god, <laughs> it's just insane. He did have a little rollover in one of the heats. Unfortunately, uh, did a little cosmetic damage, but didn't uh, didn't hurt the the car at all. And that's a car that he built from scratch. Uh, just right. a reminder uh, remind our listeners, and we've had him on here a few times. We need to get him it's a, back. It's on a quote a unquote while. Suzuki Samurai. <laughs> <laughs> right it's got a suzuki samurai hood that's about it that's about um, it exactly but, yeah freaking awesome man um you know he's he's old school from the uh rock crawling days uh right. rocks and stuff and then graduated uh building this car and and working his way through the uh ultra four series here and uh 2025 chris 4800 <laughs> Ooh, baby, I baby. love it. I'm He's good friends to that. with old uh, Phil Lacardi, Shock Jesus, out here in Gardnerville. I saw uh-huh. Phil last weekend at uh, at our, our our greatest bar in the world, uh, oldest bar in Nevada, Genoa, Genoa Bar. Genoa Bar, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, Phil was in there just kicking it after uh, on a you know snowy. Saturday here. <laughs> in the stay Carson away from Valley. the Braziers, Jason. Stay away from the Braziers. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I love the history of that place and it, it's just a cool, cool vibe. So, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, I know Dolly was out there and Eric, uh, and, uh, Stuart, um, were out there, uh, supporting everybody too. I, I, I love Dolly's, uh, lives. <laughs> it's right up in there. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to so log the back. Gomez the brothers were out there. Up. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah of I mean, course. They're, just, they're local. Yeah, they're, they're, they're locals. They're local. So. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a great uh, spot. Luckily things dried out and uh, they had nice dry conditions on Saturday for race or dry. Or I should say it <laughs> yeah, so didn't wet. insta dry. That's the for rains sure. on Friday, but, <laughs> but Saturday, at least it wasn't raining and it was nice. So that that's good. Um, and our our, our yeah. buddy Andy Carnitas was there taking photographs. Oh, Andy so. was there, huh? Yeah. So that's that's awesome. We'll see um, a lot of his artist art artistic work. Artistic, autistic, or artistic? Artistic. All of his oh, his okay. craft. Artistic. He was practicing his his hobby, and he's an ex. He's a really good photographer. I mean, he takes yeah, some he fantastic gets some good, shots. Good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, he gets in there. He's in the fray. I mean, last year he almost got run down by Shannon Campbell. So, you know, well, that's true. I mean, if you're going to get run down, being run down by a three-time that's, king is, is a yeah, good way to bad. go. Not, <laughs> not a bad way to go. 
Um, so he, I, he I will say uh, there was um, somebody uh, I'm seeing reports here on uh, Nick Bailey, Avalanche Technical, um, of course, uh, Stellar Built um with oh yeah they're out they were out on tracks this weekend up by meadow lake um they had a little track fest run yeah oh, invitation look at this. only for, the next level right well that's it there's only a handful of people with tracks but I, I, it looks like uh tyler tyler's been uh treating his toyota like a rental and people have been driving oh, was, it who was that jimmy jet Rod driving it jimmy jimmy took it out on tracks it looks like um uh, of course, uh, you know, Stellar Bit was out there on that killer little platform that he's got. It is mm-hmm. a Toyota, but if if I owned a Toyota, that'd be the one. It's a flatbed with a, with tracks. That's a pretty fucking badass rig he's got. Uh, there was a Gladiator out there with tracks. Oh, that just triggered James right there. Samurai James is like, oh, shit, Gladiator on tracks. <laughs> And uh, and then of course the owner of the lodge um, out there he's got a suburban on tracks because why the fuck not so yeah good good stuff man uh, it just you gotta love it up here in the Sierras we we don't have the champagne powder all the time but when we get it and late snows in the spring like that it's freaking awesome. Well, I don't know what exactly happened there, but we just dropped off, Jason. But we're back. We're back in the saddle. Not we. You I dropped know, off. I'm not sure now, welcome to my freaking world. It wasn't wasn't my internet. Like. It was the computer itself decided to take a take a break. Oh, I'm not sure see? what's up with that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, the Ruby tracks, getting up there, invitation only, Stellar built, oh, and Jimmy Jet playing with Tyler's bad. rig. Tyler's, uh, you know, obviously still raising a. He started that new journey with a baby. I, I guess the baby's a month old now. Holy crap! Time flies, yeah. huh? Yeah, time flies, huh? Well, time flies when you're changing diapers. <laughs> Better well, him than you me. Go. You been there, done you that. You know that all too well. Oh yeah, no. You did it three times. Oh yeah, some. Oh yeah, three times. <laughs> well, more than three, three children, more than three times, <laughs> probably. You know, hundreds each, maybe thousands. I yeah. don't know, but yeah, those days are long gone for me, long behind me. So thank God. That's why they invented pressure washers. <laughs> I don't think that would get, hang the kid up in a and pressure wash their butt. Yeah, you just, you string them up like a deer, you know, when you're getting ready to clean a deer, and you just and that's reason number thirty seven why Jason's not a dad. Thirty seven, <laughs> like like three thousand thirty seven. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, that that sounded like a cool event. All right, so we got caught up with everything on our end. So you got anything else, Chris? No, let me look at my list here. We did the voicemails. We talked about uh, NorCal Rock Racing and the latest Check. storm, latest uh, seasons, late season storms. Check. We're done. Great ski season. All right, well, that's good. So uh, how do they get a hold of us? Well, there's so many ways, but one of the funnest ways, so is, to, many ways. Is, is to call in and get the number 408-800-5169. Again, that's 408-800-5169. Call and leave and a you, voice message. And you, get to, huh? you get to hear your voice on the air. That's right. And you, can, you, say, and you can say, Toyota suck. Yes. <laughs> we encourage that. We do encourage that. I'll send you an extra sticker if you do that. Perfect. There you go. And then uh, you can also email Jason or I at Jason's at WheelingWineWhiskey.com. And I'm Chris at WheelingWineWhiskey.com. You can also go on the IG, and we're at Wheeling Wine Whiskey there. Uh, if you just happen, if you leave a review and you DM Jason at Wheeling Wine Whiskey, we'll get you a sticker sent out in the mail, so you can yes. represent us on the trail or just just as you're bopping around town. Uh, yep. Check out our website www.wheelingwinewhiskey.com, where you'll see all of our past episodes. And you can see links to our merch and so forth there, which is, you know, super cool. You can represent us as you're wandering around and hanging out on the trail. Sierra Trek's coming up this summer. It'd be nice to see a whole bunch of people wearing our swag. It'd be killer. Woo, yeah. It's always fun seeing our swag out on the events and the trail and stuff. And uh, people are proudly representing, and we appreciate that. It, it, 
it warms the cockles of our hearts. Oh, yeah, really? It's, it's cool. Didn't you say you saw two or three people on your road trip up to Oregon last week with uh, stickers or something on cars or something? I saw some stickers on the back of rigs. Uh, yeah, so freaking cool. That was a lot of highway miles, man. And uh, yeah, I honked and waved, but they, they didn't know who the fuck I was probably. They're just like, well, yeah, hey, how you doing? I'm looking but, for the buggy. Uh, if it, if yeah, right. I didn't have any identify. Well, no, you know what? I did have the enclosed trailer and the wheeling wine and whiskey stickers were on the back, so maybe they picked up on that. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but if if I honked at you, um, that that was me, or show, Hi, or show them your tits. But you know. <laughs> And with that, we're out. <laughs>